Hello and welcome to another Truth Proof live stream and uh, welcome Paul. Thank you very much Les and uh, good to be here again Thursday night and drawing out aren't there? We're getting a little bit more daylight so uh, we'll be doing these soon in, in the daylight and uh, maybe able to visit a few places after the live streams. Um, what have you been up to? Well, uh, I've been sorting the socials out like uh, TikTok and uh, and they'll be making their way on to, um, what's the other one? What's the other one? Well, you got, there's, there's Twitter. Instagram. And there's Instagram. Instagram, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah, lots of little videos. Videos some people won't have seen before some pe and some people will have seen some of them when they've been in larger projects. But, yeah, mm -hmm. all good. And it's uh, just getting the word out there, Paul. Yep. And uh, basically, first of all, we're going to welcome everybody onto tonight's stream. I can see there's a fair few in, in the chat. If you've right. not been on the channel before and it's your first time here, then uh, especially welcome to you people. And uh, regulars, thanks for supporting the channel. And uh, let's see if we can find any names, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I saw Jay Austin in then, also sort of a great supporter and friend at Channel and, and, and friend. Disabled Welshman, Deb Shaw, Ralph Winter, Martin Abbas, Blue Shift, Simon Riley, Janice Parry. Uh, let's have a look. Lisa, Lisa Odd, Margaret Webster, Joanne, Al Durham. Good to see you, Al. Well, good to see everybody. Good to see you, you know, Blue Shift, Sober Carper. Love that name. Uh, Tino. Good. So, yeah, absolutely brilliant. And I, I can only see Stargazer Eternal. As fast as I say, I can only see one. And Jessica's doing moderating. Uh, yeah. You know, a, a few more names. Uh, Simon Riley just come up. John Meakin and Lee. Thanks for support, guys. It's re it really is appreciated. And, you know, remember, it's your live stream. We might be sat here now sort of speaking with, with these amazing guests that we're going to be speaking to tonight. But... We want questions in block capitals, if, if possible, and uh, providing it's all <laughs> good humoured and and an intelligent kind of conversation, if that's possible, and nothing derogatory. Uh, hit Philip and Ron with some questions, and myself tonight, and let's go yeah, from there. That's it. And without further ado, uh, I think you've just name checked our guest, so we'll bring him onto the stream. Welcome, uh, Ronald and Philip. Hello, yeah. Paul and Les. Hello, Paul and Les. Lovely to no, be here. Thank you very much. Great to see you, honestly. And uh, I don't know, you've been on probably this might be the third time, m maybe even the fourth. And it's always good to speak. Positivity is all that Ron and Philip Kinsella give. <laughs> not not just to the subject of unexplained phenomena, but, but to life in general. And anybody who's ever met these two guys, if you've not met them and you're watching this in chat, I'm not just saying it to make them feel good. That's what you get when you meet Ron and Philip Kinsella. Positivity. So it's great so, to see you. And, uh, you know, so the, I just say at this point, I'll disappear yeah. and I'll come back with any uh, questions uh, people in the chat might give us. And if uh, you want to answer in any of those, Ronald or Philip, uh, that's, uh, that'll be great. Yes, yeah, like absolutely. Of yes, of course. Yes. Well, as Les had in the background there, your two new books, and I've got this one here, Writers, Researchers of the Unexplained, but foremost, I would think, Experiences, and that's what's put you on this path. You know, I, I think yes. I'm, mm. I'm right in saying that. But yes. we'll, be, we'll be visiting these books all throughout the this journey tonight, but that's uh, Philip Kinsella's book, The New One, Terrestrial Trespassers. We're not after selling books, people, but we'll be talking about a few things that's in the book and illusions and don't you just love this cover i'm sorry but i think it's better than your cover philip <laughs> that, <laughs> that's that is, christopher turner did that that is absolutely stunning it, it's brilliant Thank so you. let's let's jump to it and we know that some people will be familiar with what you do what you're about but for those that aren't how did you become involved or yeah. or did the subject interest you or did it did you connect with something unknown yeah, I think that there, it wasn't uh, an area that I really wanted to go into. It was because both of us um, have had what they call paranormal 
uh, UFO experiences. And, and don't be mistaken, you know, these weren't like anything that was at close range until a little bit later into our lives. Um, and there were four absolutely major events that changed my whole uh, le understanding of reality as we, as we know it. And that was when we were 13 years of age and we had seen a silver orb in broad daylight. Uh, it looked, I suppose, really like the Foo Fighters that reported back in the, the World War II that, that came over to us in our garden with our grandmother when we lived in, when we were staying with them and they lived in Middlesex uh, down Tatchbrook Road. They had a big house. And at, at that point, you know, it was shocking because when we asked our grandmother what it was, because it came not far over her head and it just hung there, it was silver, about the size of a football. Um, it, you know, it defied gravity. It looked like something, as Ronnie said, like from Doctor Who. And when we asked her, she said, oh, look, the fairies have come to take a closer look at us. And we realized at that point, shockingly, that it was no fairies, that maybe she was trying to allay our fears for something even more incredible. So that, that I remembered as kids going to the library and digging out the few UFO books because we didn't have much money then to, to buy books or anything like that then. And uh, I was 13, 14 and doing projects on UFOs. But then as you quite rightfully said, Paul, um, you know, going forward, there were some incredible experiences amazing encounters, close range, up close and personal, not all of which were good. But when you are touched by the singularity, you have said, it seems to connect with you. So that, that was the overall starting point of our investigations into what we know as UFO and uh, UAP paranormal research. Yeah, I think, I tend to think that when you catalog each one later on, when you speak about it within an hour on radio or TV, it seems like a lot, but they weren't because mm -hmm. it's over a, a long span of time. Um, a, sp a smattering of incidents that occurred. Certainly the sphere was the one later on in life when we were older, not as kids, 13 years old, we saw it. Uh, this, uh, I would call it a Foo Fighter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Did it was... Fascinating that what, what Philip said is the fae, that the fairies are coming mm. yeah. to see us. Yeah. So did, did you ever push her on that because was that in uh, her interpret her interpretation of what you were looking at do you think because i know you guys have said that that's what she's trying to do allay our fears but you know there are some people that subscribe to the idea that the fae could be responsible for all of this if the fae exist and people claim to have seen these d diminutive beings that c that can uh, appear in many guises mm, so, yeah it wasn't lit up I mean, the Foo Fighters usually were. This wasn't lit up, so we were quite perplexed by that, what she said. It was chrome, and it was the size of a football. It was level with the second bedroom window, uh, to give you an idea of the height over her head. And because it arrived over a fence and approached us very directly, you, we first thought it was a balloon. a balloon. You would automatically assume it was a balloon, but it wasn't because it was on a perfect trajectory, and... When it arrived, there was no cord, there was no knot. It was, it, it, I can use the word titanium now, but I wouldn't have known what that was back then. No. So it was like a shiny metal. It, it appeared soiled mm. because it was reflecting the world around it. And it just hung there. And the immediate, the immediate impression I got was that it was watching us. It was looking at some kind of camera, some kind of electronic eye, something. It was watching us. I knew. Did you feel and, clear? No, no, I don't think so. I think it was just shock, surprise. Well, there's an element which happens to us all when you see something unusual. I think it just stunned. Mm. And uh, but it, I didn't get any impression of danger from it. It was just so damn odd. Um, it didn't make any noise at all, and it hung there for a while before it shot up to the roof, and then went right, over, right and over. then it just shot off. And um, the. Sorry, the fae, the fae is interesting. In, in in answer to your question, yes, there are, as you know, as you well know, Paul, there are connections to be made with the past and with regards to these uh, moulding or, or shaping of this phenomena. Um, 
that is very interesting because as you know and we know and many other researchers know is there are patterns to be connected here and um, this is why within areas of ufological research many people have uh, decompartmentalized certain uh, categories with regards to the ufos into boxes and i don't, and i believe that this is why we have made no headway in truly understanding what we are dealing with so in answer to your question yes i agree with you paul there yeah so, it was so, like a machine it, to me it was like hardware yeah um some kind of probe or something you know what, something what, what year was this then uh it was was it 1982 Two. i think 1982 because we were 13. we were 13 mm. so it was 1982 it was very haunting very haunting but as i said to philip something from doctor who the strange. similarities to not just to things that i've been told but probably lots of people have been told and i don't think you have to be a researcher to to hear these accounts you know i think it was 1966 when the fishermen below the rocks at Crab Rocks at Bempton saw, as they said, the third ball, the football sized orb that was uh, just above their heads. And mm, so, yeah. it's, you know, I'm, I'm not saying it's the same thing, but it's similar. And there's a, there's a definite, oh, is, it, is it intelligence? It's, it didn't fly into the house, did it? It, no. it decided it were going up and over it, mm. didn't it? You know, mm. so yeah. it's, it's being directed. I mean, I don't know. If that's some kind of man-made technology, then why aren't we seeing it today? The other oh, point as well. 1966. Yeah, the yeah. other point, the other point is that when you have these experiences, anyone out there, yourself included, you never forget them. They are nope. ingrained here as clearly as I'm not talking about abductions, because sometimes invariably there is some kind of alteration of memory recall. But when you have these experiences, you never forget them. They are linked in there and they, as they happened, and it's like a film that goes back over and over and mm. over again. It's like, no, you will remember that. Nothing the more was said about it, actually. You mentioned about grandma, you know, if there was mm. anything more. No, it's right. strange, it's as if, that, but that's why I said she, and I apologise because I couldn't remember if you'd said mum or grandma. Yeah. Uh, so, 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 and and it would obviously. I think it's too late now to ask her. Obviously, she <laughs> passed. Yeah. But 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 you know, looking back now, the, when what she described it as, I just find that fascinating. And, yes. and your your interpretation of what she described it as, I, you, you knew it obviously a lot better than anyone else so you mm -hmm. your interpretation's probably spot on but yes. what if she did think that's genuinely what it was and she's not just trying to allay the fears of two young boys mm, that's right yeah well she was psychic anyway so um she used to say that the uh, the fairies would come and whisper her, her things in her ears how we uh, didn't know how she knew things and of course during back in the day you know if you claim that you were psychic and now thankfully we are beginning to have more of an awareness and understanding of consciousness and its uh, you know ability to you know extend beyond this physical matrix so to speak in varied ways so i i, I agree with you i think and it's possible um, because she, I had heard her speaking to a family member. I believe it was her daughter, our Auntie Betty, on the phone, because she lived in a big house and we, we were sleeping in the attic room and where the, there was a, a kind of like a, a spiral stairway that led down to the hall and she had one of those old telephone uh, booths. We didn't have mobile phones. No, no and, and of course that, that was her telephone. <laughs> She'd sit on it, sit there and talk to her. And I heard, heard most of this, but then after that, nothing really more was said about it. It was very, very strange. Yeah, and so talking about the the voices, then mm. uh, do you think there's a there's a uh, well, you know that where I'm going with this because I talked about it at the conference. Do you think there's a common thread running through all the genres of the unexplained, and is it the same science or the same intelligence that's working through everything? And it, I, it's not a trick question because I I know that you're I know the direction you guys or you go, Philip, with this. Mm, uh, yes, but, and. Does yeah. but it, does it have implications if it's not spirit that's mm. actually talking to people? I, I just want to point out, I think that there is the spirit. Yeah. And there is something else. Yeah. There are crashed sources and there is something else. So I think it's a mixture. Mm. Um, we can't rule anything out because we just don't know. But Do you, do you think we're dealing with a trickster element then, Ron? That's right. That's yeah. right. Yes, I, I do indeed, because of certain patterns 
which I've been investigating, which are in the book that's coming out um, later in the year that I've written, basically signatures or patterns which slightly betray a suspicion as to its kind of uh, interaction with people. You know, I mean, I think we can all agree on the fact that when people f describe the Greys, as an example, the popular entities that are recorded or reported throughout, that even I as an artist, when I illustrate them, the people are very kind. But the point is, is that a number of people, many of them say that's not what they look like. So I'm thinking that firstly is a signature, a betrayal of perhaps a weakness of something that cannot hold a genuine pattern. So they differ. It's rather like AI art. When you generate it, I have actually used it. It's clever, but I don't use it for my art. I've experimented with it. It can never get the same copy twice. In a degree of randomization, a degree of uh, dipping into a pool, a reservoir of illustrations by artists, and a degree of prompting, but it can't develop the unique picture again and again. So they differ. So I wonder if what we're dealing with, this is one of the weaknesses. I mean, you will have people explain immediately that you're wrong, there are different species. I don't believe that because there are many other pitfalls with it that clearly illustrate we're dealing with something that is not quite what we imagine. No, I, I think myself personally as well, I agree, but I'm not saying that everything that that we're seeing here in terms of the paranormal is evil. I mean, I understand, and through the process of discarnate communication, I mean, the serious levels of research, not into just near-death experience, but also into discarnate communication, that we, it seems, are connecting with those who have crossed over to the other side. And, you know, and this is where, you know, the system that we serve has told us there is no such reality as UFOs and UAPs, and there is no such thing as life after death. And when you have these experiences, when you are, well, again, touched by the singularity, you have to question whether or not you are lying or the system is lying. And I can tell you now, the system that we serve has lied because, as you know, Paul, and we know that it's programmed people to believe that they are just uh, biological automatons with a cell by date. I love that mm -hmm. uh, way I, I put that. But I believe that the phenomena itself, the UFO, UAP phenomena, whichever, whichever way you, that you view this within your reality, and certainly within our reality, uh, you know, I feel myself that we're dealing with a part of it that's not quite good. And I've had people telling me what they are, where they come from, even uh, the levels of high command and their names, which I'm sorry I lose the plot during yeah, that, that I'm point there. I'm honest, sorry. Yeah. I can't deal with that. What, what we're dealing with is the raw data, the raw information that can show us categorically that there are connections to be made between one to the other. And I always joke and say, you know, well, if we have the greys, which are real, and we have the reptilians, which are real, and the mantis and all the rest of it, what bar are they hanging out in? Because we'd like to go and have a word with them. And, and again, as you know, Paul, within the construct of ufology, it has morphed, it has changed, it has transgressed now from the 80s through to the 90s. And we are now looking at the phenomena in an entirely different light now. And I think this is very interesting and exciting. Yeah, I would agree. We, we, uh, lots of people, and I don't just mean you two or myself or Steve mm -hmm. Mira, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Barry Fitzgerald, because yes. I know they're singing from a similar page, but lots of people are saying the same thing, and we're not group, we're not sort of categorizing each phenomena. And it, and I think it, it, eventually it'll lead to less fallouts within the subject <laughs> as well. Hopefully. Oh, well, hopefully. Don't you know, because I, there's a lot of infighting in the which you know, oh, Lord. you just avoid, uh, but you know. Yeah, I mean it, the another signature of it is that um upon researching personally as well, I mean this is probably a common fact, but there were so many different species reported from the uh, 50s, 60s, and 70s, it was a, a complete and utter mess. The, the hundreds of different aliens that were illustrated and sketched, sketched uh, ranging from Vulcan types to jelly men, uh, I kid you, not jelly men, uh, to a range of so many, until it was fixed and set, something that became in vogue or was popular, it became popular, which is the grey, the embryonic looking things. 
And um, so this, this and many other aspects, uh, in fact, I, I have discovered quite a number of patterns which, which betray this. Now, I, I'm not new in stating this, this has been stated before, but I personally looked myself into certain signatures which I discussed at the awakening um, at the conference, uh, very kindly of the team who had Philip and I there, certain things I thought about and which became apparent. Now, not everyone's going to like it because unfortunately there are people out there who absolutely do believe there are species, they know what planet they are, what kind of model ship they fly, their high command. I'm sorry to shatter that. If they wish to believe that, that's fair enough. I'm not going to tread on their toes. But certainly it's very disturbing what we have discovered. Yeah, it, you know, and it's, it, it, I think you've just as much right to say that as the people who are saying that they can tell you what star system these these alleged beings or intelligences are coming from. And and once again, I'm not just agreeing with you for the sake of it. I, I actually think these things, this intelligence, whatever it is, is already here. And I wouldn't even dare to say that I think it's residing in a certain galaxy and we've got mm. all these different types of beings visiting us. And it, 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 it jumps across to even the cryptid mm. realm, if you like, because... There's lots of people saying there's loads of different variants of these things. That's the word that they use, variants of them. And uh, I think just if, if if these things, I don't I don't personally think that the the living and breathing on terra firma. I think no. it's some of the slipping in in and out of reality. But if they were, then we're going to see different shapes, different sizes. Just if they are a species, which I don't think they are. We, we would see different shapes, different sizes, different colours, just like we see the human race. It's, yes, that's and, right. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, you know, it, 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 I don't know. I don't know where it all starts and stops. But uh, you were talking about the Foo Fighters. Uh, you touched on it. You weren't talking about it, but you were touched on it when you saw the yes. sphere. What are your views? What Have, have you done any research into these these spheres of light that the pilots saw during mm. the walk because i yes. think they're the same as what we're viewing today what, yes can you tell us a little bit about that then yes. we are none the wiser i mean during the war they thought they were the enemies they all each yes. suspected each other and they found out that they weren't so what they are we cannot say but you know because they seem to go through jets as well that they 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 were indestructible they were just i think they were they must be observation cameras some type of modern or extraterrestrial or interdimensional or another forces idea of watching us but then that doesn't seem to make sense because i argue that uh, we're connected to it through consciousness from the cradle to the grave we are connected um an idea I'll give you, to you about that is when we experimented with many different things, you will do. When you've been down the rabbit hole, you're going to experiment with a number of things, psychic um, uh, experiments, the Ouija board, we yes. use that. And this is very interesting, although people may think it's not uh, on par with UFOs, I think it is. Because upon using this, this gave me the idea that, you know, when people wish to see them, um, in some cases, they do see them. It's a wish, you see. So it's like when you wish to use the Ouija board, you wish to make contact. Again, I'm not stepping on any toes here. Um, we experimented, and one thing I found out from, this was over 20 years ago, Philip and I did these experiments with a friend of ours, Susan, who was a very, uh, a very smart uh, young lady. Um, we used one. We, we created this board and put letters around it, cut them out, and used a, a glass tumbler as the planchette. And the first problem we had with it is every time we moved the planchette, we'd move the pieces of paper off the table, get falling off. So we, we dealt with that accordingly, but we got something through. We didn't know what it was. It was beginning to uh, come up with all this gobbledygook, this nonsense. And I said, Philip and I, we said, no, we need, we need proof. We need something, something tangible. So I had an idea. I said to Susan, Susan, go outside, write something on a bit of paper, stick it in your pocket, come back in. Well, she knew what we were doing. So she went out and wrote something down and put it in her pocket, came back in. And I said to it, I said to the board, right, you will tell us what is written on that piece of paper. And it's spelt trickery, trickery. I said, no, if you're in our position, you would expect the same. What was on that paper? What is on it? And it came out with D-A-R-T-H. 
M-A-U-L, Darth Maul. Now, at the time, this is when it was, there was a Star Wars film. That was one of these characters, George Lucas's Star Wars films, Darth Maul. Well, Susan went white. She pulled the paper out of her pocket and showed it to us. And then I was amazed, and I said to it, I did well, I can't remember what I said, but it said it actually smugly said satisfied. And I stupidly thought it had read that piece of paper until later on you realize that something is hooked up to consciousness. That's right. Mm. It's mm. reading your mind. So are mm. these things doing exactly the same thing? Yeah, the same yeah. the same occurred, yeah. The same occurred in Rendlesham when we performed the, the CE5 initiative, although at that time uh, on the 8th of June 1998, we didn't realize that's what we were doing. Um, and of course, that proved to me most definitely that this phenomena is able to interconnect with our consciousness. So this, this also led me into research and theoretical ideas with regards to the abduction and phenomena and greys. But it seems clear that consciousness, as you know, Paul, uh, seems to be a direct result of the interaction with this force, wherever it comes from, whatever, whatever it's doing, um, almost like a, a Aladdin's, uh, La La Aladdin's lamp, as it were. I call it the atomic yeah. magician. Yeah, I refer to it as that because somehow it's able to manip manipulate. I can't get the word up. Manipulate atomic matter, atoms. Um, I mean, I might be quite wrong, you know, many of us might be barking up the wrong tree, but as I said, there are so many telltale signs. Uh, it's becoming a little bit flawed, uh, the yeah. spaceman ideology, even as you were talking about the cryptids, certainly Steve Mirror and the other team uh, I suspect as much, I mean, them being pioneers as well as yourself in this subject, but certainly, you know, that's why they can never find them. Um, yeah. They can never find the cryptids, they just vanish because they evidently like the aliens that they 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 have similar traits they come in and they go out they're gone you know do you, th they, well, do you think we're actually seeing them just bear with me a minute do you do you think we're actually seeing ghosts do you think we're actually seeing the cryptids the aliens imagine if they can plant words into our minds or of voices audible voices that we can hear can they can they actually allow us to see things that and they're they're showing us these images and we're thinking we're seeing them in real time yes we don't know but i suspect they're not really them i mean they can even bring the greys have been known to bring dead relatives uh, into the room for the uh, abductee to see so are they using your mind i think they are yeah they're, they're messing with you it, and, and what do you think they're deriving from it do you th because you, you've just mentioned relatives dead rel deceased relatives mm -hmm. So would that be because they're getting something from our emotions? Yes, yes. I would think that the best contester, contender I, I can um, think of at, at that point is, I know it sounds rather ridiculous, is fear. Yeah. Something or you're astonished, you're, you know, it, I don't know, but there's something. I mean, whatever they are, whatever this force is, I think it is mainly based on one thing, that is able to split itself into hundreds of thousands of different components. The men in black, Spring Hill Jack, the entity that was reported throughout the Victorian era, well, the, the 1830s onwards to the 1890s, I think. You have all these monsters that change. You see, the greys wouldn't have worked then. They would not have worked. They were just too radical. Mm -hmm. We've not, just... I think we'd not evolved or, or, or come far enough to, to, use, right. that, that, to use that model. Should we say that's, that's right? Idea. Yeah. So something's very, very aware of our traits, of our fads, of what's in vogue. This mm -hmm. is what it is, and you know, it, 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 and I know people will say about you know the physical stuff, you know, like the crash saucers, certainly the one, the crowned uh, one at Roswell, the most infamous case of all. Um, I, which I do believe happened. I believe they have wreckage and perhaps bodies uh, of strange entities there, certain other things. So it, whatever we have with us, do you know, I'm going to say, so it's, going to, it's just like Stephen King's It. I don't know if anyone's seen the film where it could transform into many different faces. It would appear that this is something similar to what we're dealing with. I know it sounds far-fetched, but aren't the aliens far-fetched? Aren't the cryptids far-fetched? We have to... Yeah, I don't think there's anything that we're talking about that does not sound far-fetched to 
to yeah. the general populace. But, you know, all those people, the general public, should we say, because that's what we are anyway, essentially. But all of the people that are not sat here, all of the people that are just sat watching TV soaps, you can bet your bottom dollar that they will have had some kind of experience that they're just they've either tucked away or just just through it's just gone straight into that ear or through the eyes and back of the out at back of the head because yes. I, I, my mind's made up and i'm not going to yeah. change it kind of thing i have i have got a theory about that <clears throat> and and through my uh the onslaught of the very violent uh, experience that I had later in 1989. I'm not going into detail with that here and now. It's done, it's dusted. I've been over it maybe a thousand times. And as you know, Pierce Sabak has been instrumental in putting pieces to that phenomena together. But I was curious as to how they were able, there was a physical part of the experience and one that was non-physical where I was taking outside uh, through uh, glass and not able to understand how that was achieved. Now, Going back to that question of whether Ronnie uh, stated here about physical crafts, crashed UFOs, is interesting, and I did make mention this in the terrestrial trespasses, isn't it? That the phenomena, the force, I think, must build and shape itself in order to enter into our reality, because a lot of the time when there are subsequent small pieces of debris that is discovered from a crashed UFO or now UAP. Strangely, the acronym has changed for something the system didn't believe. Um, there is always a lot of human or, uh, sorry, earth materials that humans can associate with, but there's always a little something else that is not quite what they expected to find that seems strange or alien. So I believe it's possible that whatever a certain faction of this force is, I'm not saying that all of the ETs are on, <laughs> I believe in the good ones as well, wherever they are, they must be out there. For, are there any? Universe. Well, I'm just saying. But I think and feel that when they come into our reality, I believe that they construct themselves through our materials and become solidified because it's, if they're in a hyper space or in a, an altered dimension of reality, they will have to be matched by our frequency rather like a signal uh, hitting a mobile phone. You have the two components and especially us on a biological level with consciousness, two separate components, but connected as one. So this is where a lot of the ideas and uh, theories that we're looking at um, in order to understand what, what this phenomena is. And yet it's even more strange and disturbing, uh, as I said to you before, Paul, I'm sure I've mentioned this, that there is always some kind of toy-like quality to the experience, which is even more um, frightening, I think, to be honest with you, um, with regards to the way that you, the, the, the force itself interacts with you on an individual level, um, because you are powerless when you are going through the experience, they are in charge. And it's almost as if this phenomenon is so cocky that it knows that, oh, you won't be able to put the pieces together, you won't be able to join the dots. But when I had the abduction back in 1989, and there was that godforsaken gray that was like a noddy type figure at the end, I wanted to ask it how it was possible for me to get through solid matter. And he looked shocked, like it seemed to be an overriding for my uh, question and wasn't able to answer it and seemed to scramble reality. Um, but I, I think when we, we look into that area, this this tells us a lot about, uh, you know, interdimensional or uh, manifestation or transmutation from their level. It's not just that. It's like, the, it's the interaction as well. It's like in the 50s, we know of cases where people, when the UFOs conventionally landed, conveniently, isn't it? conventionally landed by that i mean just touched down on yeah, yeah. the door opening up and they came out and took the uh, the people in and it was all about the preventing of nuclear war they were concerned about atomic then warfare but then you notice later on they've done nothing if they're so concerned no. if they were so concerned they would just whip around nullify those weapons mm -hmm. and that would be it and we build more that do the same now people have arrogantly stated they've already done it they haven't because they're still online. It doesn't matter how many times they assume all this, this nonsense that they pretend or they, they give the illusion that they're concerned. They're always back online. They can, if they, with their might and power, they can just nullify every nuke on this earth. They haven't. But to add to this, we move on to the 90s where it shifts from the atomic concern to the environmental and again we see the same trait they've done absolutely nothing it's as if with this 
people, we're being jumbled deliberately. Some are shown that many actually are shown the destruction of Earth, mm. the fear for em emotional stimuli, and their concern for you know the environment or you know. So some are being shown the goodness of these things, where others are being shown the badness. We're being had for fools, and, I believe, and it puts us at odds with each other as well, doesn't it? You know, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. And mixing and mixing and mixing, yeah. so we can't look in a particular direction. Another thing that I suspected about these alleged graves um, is the fact that one MUFON investigator, a very respected gentleman, had an encounter with them because he wished to see them. He stated he wished to see them again, consciousness, a wish. Mm, yeah, yeah. And guess what? They arrived. They arrived through the wall of his house. In a, He said it was like something from Scooby-Doo, this whirring of colour. And they moved, these greys, moved in tandem. So uh, it's as if they were hovering towards him, and it was extremely menacing because they stuck these tubes in his chest and drained some kind of liquid, and then they went away. So it's very odd, and those look different to the many others reported. The amount of times I can't stress this, again and again, how many people state they know they look like this, their skin is like that, their eyes are like this. Do you know, there's that, as I stated, there's a clue there to it. And also the reptilians, the reptilians. I wonder, this shape-shifting business, if that has not been completely misconceived, that they believe that people are them, they become them, when in actual fact it's something else, allowing them to see that. Yeah. So the people have no knowledge of these things, but they actually see them. It, it, it's strange, isn't it, that, that people in their respective fields and outside of our subject but maybe have an interest in ghosts, maybe have a mild interest in the cryptid phenomena, not even, mm -hmm. even subconsciously. But that's we tend to see what we invest our time in, invest our thoughts in, as you were just saying. You know, it's a matter of channeling the mind and we, we, we tend to, it gives us what we want. Do we see it or is it the phenomena giving us what we want? And mm. if, if we suddenly channeled our thoughts in a different direction, would we start seeing that? Would we start experiencing that? That is a good question. And this is where we come into the annals of consciousness because people believe that imagination is a little box inside your head that opens and closes now and again. Imagination is mind and mind is the creator. We are all linked to, I believe, a greater source, like a hub of consciousness. And I totally believe in what people call the soul or, or a spark of awareness that gives us that light that gives us that that ability to be on what we are and i believe that when we die there is a lot more involved in that take away the religious ideologies which are important constructs for some but i think the experience is far more raw and fascinating but we create from the mind the problem is, and I believe that this force is so aware of how we operate. I mean, you know, we're not being abducted by Darth Vader or the Stormtroopers or any more than we'd be abducted by, uh, you know, characters from Harry Potter or the Daleks from Doctor Who. This phenomena has chosen a particular and very disturbing <clears throat> kind of like characteristic of, of these greys. Um, you know, when you go back to the, the Fae, that were quite menacing. I mean, people think that they're all love and light. If you go back into history, you'll find that they were very menacing and people try to stay away from, you know, the, the fairy rings and that type of thing. It's very interesting. And the same with the werewolves, the big bad wolf. I mean, the original story, if you go back, was not as lovely and fanciful as the children's story depicts. It was far more horrifying if you go back into the day. And we know about the cases and in, um, in uh, France of the uh, the werewolf that terrorized a, a kingdom and was killing a lot of people, beheading them. So, you know, when you said, uh, Paul, about the variations and connections with regards to this phenomena and you know how it's morphed and molded and also how it's been separated into different categories, I believe that it's interesting how this phenomena knows it's so complicated that no, you won't be able to work it out. Um, and Margaret Thatcher, or then Baroness Thatcher, I did have the great pleasure of meeting um, Georgina Bruni. And when she said, when Georgina Bruni had asked Baroness Thatcher about the reality of UFOs, and everyone knows this, I'm sure, and Baroness Thatcher said, UFOs, first of all, you have to get your facts right. And when you do, 
get your facts right around about this wording, you'll mm -hmm. find then why it is that we can't tell the people. So what does that tell you? Mm -hmm. I, I, this is this is this goes deep. It's not just a, a layering of flying saucers with sorry about this within the media, little green men. We are dealing with something that is far more complex within its construct. And, and you know, and, and this is why we're trying very hard to try and put those pieces like yourself together. Yes, sir. The airships, the exotic airships of the um, 1890s, yeah. mm. they weren't flying saucers then, but they were something, man had developed airships, I've, I've done my research for this, it's in the new book, um, before that. So something came up with something a bit more advanced, always, always a touch beyond what we can do, you know, and they saw them, these people reported seeing these exotic airships with these strange airmen, even, for God's sake, a, a cow being hauled up, we would term it as cattle yeah, I, I won't yeah. use the word no. the cattle injuries yeah um you know the, yeah, I, I, did, no that, strand, is no, I did want to talk about that because i knew you'd done a bit of work on that uh, and uh, we can we can stay with it now if you want because the, the reported in all well in local archives in eastern north yorkshire it, it, the, these airships these the, 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 the totally silent beaming lights down onto the ground i think we'd got them in 80 late 1800s 1909 seemed really prevalent yeah and yeah. and when what i found interesting is that when people were viewing them when they actually viewed them on mass they went away at great speed and these things i don't think they, they went to, the, the actual man made yeah. versions didn't travel at great speed so yeah. yes i how much work have you done on the airships then, Rob? Yeah, quite a bit, because it was hauling the cow up through a, a, a rope around its neck. It sounds and a bit crude, though, doesn't it? A rope. You yeah, I, I, some I kind, of, some kind of thing. Some cable or something. Levitate you know? this thing, you know what I mean? And we're <laughs> yeah. going to see it float up. But <laughs> and, rope. You know, this happened again with a gentleman in the 1950s. Is it? White Sands Proving Ground. Yes. Uh, people have tried to dismiss it, but they dismiss everything. There's there's no proof we don't have any, but I believe certain testimonies. It's the fact that this man was hauled up by a, a, a cable Lovett. from the base of a flying saucer. Yes, Lieutenant Lovett, and I think it was Major... Oh, what was his name? I can't remember his name. Hart so this is a military man that's been... Yeah, he in the 1950s. But you see, when Star Trek came out... This is what I've been looking at. When Star Trek came out, I'm not saying it's the, the absolute, you know, the foundation for it, but strangely after that, the conventional landings transformed into people being beamed up. Yeah. So again, we look at these traits of this force, uh, of what is in vogue and perhaps given us the illusion or actually uh, employing these tactics for the spaceman analogy you know that kind of uh, spaceman kind of impression because it wasn't hot in the early 1800s in fact it wasn't hot in the late 1800s but started to mold when science fiction became more hot you know or do you think we could in some instances flip that and they've actually planted the seeds for us to to develop new ideas yeah, i don't know i don't know why would they do that i don't I, believe I, that I no, don't, I don't. Right. there's something yeah. there's not something quite wrong oh. you know why not with the people say about roswell let's take roswell the roswell craft for an example 1947. we it's something we will never ever be able to prove i mean i saw a book called roswell the truth the truth what do you mean truth you know you can say that about every book you know it's tested me from others the only people yep. who are going to believe it or dismiss it are those that read it there is no yep. truth to it because it's completely muddied but i do personally believe a spaceship crashed there because mm. they admitted mm. it they admitted it they had in their possession a crashed disc that's what they called it and then they quickly changed the testimony so they've got something exotic it wasn't yep. for russia or anything like that during the cold war it was nothing of the sort that's something very very strange but the point being with that is that even there, why would it be, if it was a Trojan horse, why would it be deployed? What, to gain electronic uh, insight uh, for technological progression? I don't believe so, because again, we're looking at the two parallels. You have us, they, for God's sake, we've just finished the world war then. And you know, you, you drop this kind of technology if people are referring to it as a Trojan horse, as I have done, firstly, I think in four years ago, I published it. 
Um, but then there are questions about it because even then the tech could not be, I don't believe, could be back engineered, reverse engineered. I mean, you're talking about two different worlds. Well, let's just get some copper wiring. Let's get a nuclear reactor. And, you know, it's not going to work. I don't but but it people, works. it wouldn't, I'm not saying you're wrong here, but pe it wouldn't stop men of science trying, would it? If oh, yes. Yes. Things, of course yes. it would. You, you know, yeah. I know what you're saying, and we probably yeah. don't have the components, the right elements to, to, to actually get yeah. this thing airborne or whatever whatever process th that would be needed, but it would not stop people trying, would it? No. But it would be like giving the Victorians one of our modern-day mobile phones and asking <laughs> them to replicate it. It would be like mm. giving it me, to be honest. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I think so. <laughs> yeah. Just, can we can we just can we just jump? We'll get some questions in five ten minutes, but I just want to jump back to the Ouija board, not the use of it. But do you th do you think then <clears throat> that this is? It could be anything for um, for argument's sake. It could be that marker pen uh, with letters around it. It's because it's it's this that's doing the work, and that's just a almost a tool, just something to channel the energy that's into. Correct. That's right. Uh, so when people talk about the Ouija board and say, what, what I mean, we don't, I've not used one to be honest, but it's a dark and sinister thing. And do, do mm. you, obviously th th that seed is then planted. So you go into it with that mindset. So you might connect with something that's dark and sinister. Uh, yes. but, but is it just a tool? In, in a, just your view on it. Yes, it I be, believe. If we put yeah. around a matchbox yeah. and comes, you, you know. I know what you mean. It's rather like clairvoyants that use cards. I mean, it's not normally the cards that they're reading. They're actually picking up impressions or vibrations from there. But it's, it's a tool to focus consciousness. And this is the thing about consciousness, because consciousness creates. We create from consciousness. There are some things that we cannot pull through in the process of manifestation because we have not the tools or the, or the materials to do that. But the mind creates everything. Imagery you you name it it creates it people have their hopes dreams fantasies their futures all of these things have been streamed into the what i call the eternal cosmic corridor that we're all connected to in varied routes because think of your mobile phones they all have signals every single one of them and people say well where's my signal even when your phone's finished its recording uh through the transmission and receiving of information that if that that information is sent on a wavelength to into the ether as it were and you can reconnect with that with a new device so it's interesting how you have mentioned consciousness because you know i i know that you know about this as well paul that are we co-creators to this phenomenon as well we have to be open to this form of speculation people will up in arms and say no 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 it can't be that but we you know i'm open to all forms of speculation because we just don't know but we the mind creates the mind builds and this is why this goes so much further than just the nuts and bolts aspect of ufology because you know within your brilliant research of not just the ufo investigations but also the cryptozoology and namely the werewolves you know that these beings suddenly trans trans uh, you know transpire but they are physical they take on a physical mm -hmm. build there is smells there is interactions there is sometimes evidence of their footprints and then they just go out like that so yeah. it's interesting i think we look at that in terms of like the create the creation myth or the, the creation which isn't a myth but is actually a reality because of going back into the past of a minotaur and all these other beings that were around that suddenly have disappeared and are we are we the creators in some instances of this this reality you know Correct. i've looked i looked at the folklore along the eastern north yorkshire coast and i don't i don't disbelieve the people that we've spoke to in wolflands for one second that's we, we i wouldn't have invested three years of, of my life in it and neither would les the, 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 the absolutely genuine people but i sometimes think to myself I've, I've revived all this folklore and talked about this phantom hounds with glowing eyes and 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 suddenly not suddenly but we're getting people seeing these things on the cliff tops and mm. and are we almost bringing this back? Are we reviving it? I don't know. I spoke to a guy who told told us, and I talked about it. This this werewolf type creature that he'd actually seen on top of a roof over across the road from his home, and uh, but what he said was a few weeks before contacting me because he'd been thinking about contacting me for a long time. He 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 started to. Th 
the guy's in the chat. <laughs> he started. <laughs> yeah, I know he is. He started to think about it, and and in a, he were walking just down a, a lane, trees and bushes, but he suddenly got the feeling that it, it was aware. Something was aware. Do you know? Do you know what I mean? And mm. and. and we, we've had Matt Empch on, the, the, the American guy who tells the, the Youngstown uh, dogman encounter that he had as a, as a teenager with a group of other boys. And I, I don't know if Matt's used the exact words, but he's, he's told me and he said it on, I think on our live stream when we had him on the second time, that he's, he's, now, have, he's now starting to have dreams and he thinks this thing's speaking to him. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, now, uh, apologies, people, if I've not said it quite right, how Matt's said it to, to me, but that's that's the basis of it. And the guy, for all intents and purposes, seems perfectly sane. You know, he's, he's, he's mm -hmm. a good, yeah. honest, yeah. honest to goodness man. The so are, are, we are we nudging the phenomenon? Are we, are we sort of reviving it? And is, is it the memory path back to the experience that, that's happening, this intermind connection? Well, I, it's what's interesting. And I wonder if any other um, people will, will confirm this, is that when I was working on the new book, I thought, my God, this is going to be unique, original. And, you know, looking at it from this perspective, I mean, it, it's only looking at it from this perspective. We could be wrong. They might be right. You know, but you have to open up that kind of box to have a look in and just discuss it. That's how we get results. You have to discuss every aspect of it. But what's interesting is that when I thought I was the only one looking into this, all of a sudden, there are other people at the same time. And my goodness, even the Awakening Conference, kindly inviting us, were discussing this very thing. So I believe we are all connected through mm. mind. The people are all connected. Mm. But has something else commandeered it? Mm. Is something else there uh, as well as us? Because, you know, it's funny. When you think of something, you'll see it everywhere. Mm. It, 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 yeah. it, it's quite remarkable you may not realize it at the time but afterwards you think well my goodness i've seen a few of them you know i'm mm. just thinking about that so i wonder if we're all interlaced with this our own consciousness i do believe is interconnected yeah but whether something else is uh hijacked it or uh, you know is it, from the cradle to the grave as i stated mm. you know we are we are part of it and it decides to interact or not you know this force it's it's almost it's more than uh, more than coincidence, isn't it? You know, there, there seems yes. to be a lot more than coincidence occurring with mm, yeah. this. Yeah, and, I think um, maybe it could be possible that the um, in the past, if we if we look at this seriously within the past, with regards to conscious control, conscious subjugation, and this has always been leveled off in varied varied epochs throughout our evolution, and you know the churches would promote a lot of fear and um you know damnation if you were using your mind outside of the normal processing of how the system expected you to use it for instance witchcraft and i think this was containing the ability for the individual to become aware that they were far more than just a biological machine that their mind was oh and could be opened to other levels of reality but the system came in and condemned it and slammed it. And of course, what happens then, as we're talking about consciousness, this created a narrowing within the field. But look what's happening now. What's happening now is that people are breaking away from these uh, organizations, which is telling them how to think and what to think. And there is nothing outside other than what you're told by the conventional and educational system, especially by the system we serve. So uh, there's a lot more phenomena that's starting to happen. And I wonder whether or, not, whether or not the barriers have started to break and begin to open. And this is allowing a, f uh, a flooding in of these alternative creations or realities that are coming into our reality that is now allowed and gaining access. Because we know that the mind can you can you can do a ritual and your belief will summon that being or the whatever threw in more, more times than not if you put a lot of practice into that and i'm not saying that this is something that everyone should do because you have to be very careful um you know you're not you don't want to be burnt by the experience in terms of like going down a road that you don't understand you must always be very cautious and careful but indeed in the early days of wanting to summon ufos and that that happened at Rendlesham, which you know about we actually did a c5 we summoned one and i'm wondering was that me us doing that 
or was that the phenomena interacting with us and knowing what our intentions were? Mm -hmm. Giving you what you wanted. You've yeah. got it. Yeah, but yeah. Why, why would it do that? There was a case that fascinated me, a number of cases to do with the reptilians. And I do believe this is all part of the same element where this fireman and his wife were asleep in their bedroom one night and these huge reptilian beasts walked through their wall. I believe this is what happened. Mm. And they came into their room, they were massive, and they peered down at them, I believe. I think that's what they did. And the fireman was so horrified. And they even left, when they went, imprints in the shag pile, the, the rug, and he found a piece of their claw, a piece of claw from their toes, some kind of claw, you see, it's really bizarre. Why would they do that? Why? It's like, it's no different from the alien uh, abduction no. scenario. They, didn't, they weren't abducted, but they saw them. It, but it's it, it, everything what, it, with what you've just said is so confusing. There's mm. been this dematerialization of solid mass. They've walked through a wall. Mm. Uh, they've, then they've left this heavy impression in the carpet. Uh, and the, if, if this is true, I'm not, I'm not saying it's not. Uh, we don't right. know. Uh, but 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 then the, there's a there's a piece of physical left. There's a piece of claw left. It's it, it, everything contradicts the other, doesn't it? You know, that's it's, correct. It's, there was another and, case. And that, as well. that's, that's the whole purpose of it. I don't know. Sorry, go on. There was another case with a reptilian. Um, this hotel mogul, this tycoon. Um, he was um, on vacation with his family. I think it was a national park. I wish I could find the YouTube video. If anyone knows what it is, please let me. No, by a link or something. I saw it some years ago. And he saw this group of people far away, I think it was in the woodland, in a ritual. They were performing a ritual in a circle. And this reptilian beast appeared in the, in the center of this. And it saw, because the family, the mogul, the tycoon and his family were watching it, it saw them and it, it just arrived there. And it was very interested in the women, but it paralyzed them. And it told them that you haven't seen me. <clears throat> I'm not going to harm you. You haven't seen me. And that was it, you know. And he's he's because he's Christian, uh, he, he had to be very careful how he uh, described it because they would interpret it as being demonic demons. So yeah. it's very strange this thing, this 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 force. Either it's playing games with us, or it's actually um, like an Aladdin's lamp. You wish for it and it appears. God knows why. It was a pity it can't raise a million pounds when you want it, and it's always, it's always. <laughs> yeah. uh, do you know? Do you know? I don't think there's a wrong answer at the, at the stage we're at at the moment. Uh, I don't think there is a wrong answer. I think you've just thrown about three analogies out there, and mm -hmm. and I don't think it's a failing to to say that any one of them or a mixture of all three of them could be correct. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I really don't. And before weird, we move, before we sort of go any further. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping there might be a few questions from chat, and we'll we'll bring Les in if he's if he's got a minute. And uh, uh, there he is. Have we got questions? There Les? we go. Have we got questions? Of course, we have questions, uh, and uh, very knowledgeable people in the chat uh, send us some great questions uh, through. Now, just uh, see how Laura. All, so hi, Laura. Yeah, yeah, sorry. yeah. First of all, I'll just put some non-questions in, really, uh, just so I don't miss these out. Brett Barrow Hi, asks, Brett. howdy to the Kinsella brothers and Paul. Hi, Brett. Hi, Brett. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah, lovely. Yeah. Brett, yeah. Yeah. The art yeah. of Brilliant artist. artist. Yeah, brilliant yeah. artist. Yeah. Um, yeah, we said yeah. this before. Sorry, Les, I'm, but, I'm cutting across you there, but they've just echoed it as well. Brett needs to send us some of his artwork, and we'll because we keep saying it. You guys have said it. I said it the other yeah. week. It's amazing. We, we need to show yeah. people what we're talking about or what he and, does. Uh, Sorry, Les, by the way. Our, our friend of the show, Jay Austin, is saying Yes, the book Illusions is fantastic. Hello, Jay. How are you? Hello, Jay. Thank you. Bless very your much. art. Thank you. <laughs> Thank it you really very is a good book. That's very kind. I hope you're you, okay. Jay. Yeah, we well, hope you're okay, Jay. Yeah, yeah we saw uh, your awakening, didn't we? Yeah. yeah, I'm just going to throw this one in for you, Paul. So these are kind of non questions up to this point. Okay. Um, Steve Dixon is saying, would you be interested in a group events at Bempson, like a large gathering, Paul? <laughs> Do you know, Steve, we. They were, I think there were there were six of us up there last night. Uh, that's not a large group. I do really, well. It depends what you call a large group, mm. I suppose. And very often there's there's four or five of us up there, you know, on an evening. And uh, I rarely go up on my own now on a night. But uh, I, I just as a shout out, we had uh, uh, Rebecca up with us last night, and 
Steph and they came with me, Pete and Ian, and you know, just and nothing happened. Just enjoyed the atmosphere of this strange place and the potential. But, well, actually, the EMF machines were going absolutely stupid, good distance away. But filmed a lot of that so we can get some of that out. But uh, would we be interested? Uh, it, it's time, Steve. I've not, I wouldn't rule it out. And usually, if people reach out to me, I'll go and spend some time with them. And there's a guy coming up this weekend, and I've, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting up with him because he's had his own experience uh, there last year uh, in August, which is interesting. But not on the cliff tops. He had it in another place, but in area. Right, enough of me yeah. then. Let's just yeah, uh, thanks for that, Steve. And uh, I like this one, fourteen twenty-three. Uh, I was so impressed with the presentations <coughs> these guys did at the awakenings. First time I'd heard them speak, and it was cap I was captivated. Well, I'm very Thank honoured. Thank you very much. But I, you, I always you. say that we're all part of this, and that's the lovely thing about it. We're all like a big family, and you know. Yeah. Just because we're up there speaking, you've all had your experiences. You know, we're all in this for the truth, for the reality of that, and that—that's what—that's why we're all here. That's what fascinates each and every one of us that we're connecting on that level. And yeah. it's—and would you believe it's more the theoretical aspect that I love? I'm—I'm I'm so involved in that. Thank you, fourteen. Yeah, we're just looking yeah. for, like yourself and everyone else, we're just trying to find the truth of it. I don't think we're ever going to get that far, really. Well, I don't know. Well, maybe yeah. not. Well, you've got twenty-five years yet. Oh, we're thanks a lot. You're going to write me off already. I think we're going to find that. <laughs> Nice, isn't it? I'm out of here in 25 years. <laughs> Probably 80. Okay, then I don't know if you can handle this one, this next one, uh, guys, but it's from Mark Anderson. Both just wonderful people. Oh, well, I'm very honoured. And, you know, you are as well. Sometimes we have to be careful because, you know, you don't want anyone to mistake your humility as a weakness. And I've always lived my life walking and Ronnie, a very, very careful balance with sometimes you are who you are and what you have to be. And there are some people who are not. But I know that when we're in these groups, especially Paul and Les, like family, and I say that, and, and Paul knows that anyway. Uh, thank so you, Mark. That's very nice that's of you, very Mark. Thank kind. you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Anderson. Thank you. Okay. And then I think we are on to a question now from uh, Rick Allen. Is there a characteristic, characteristic found in genuine spirits that is not found in the negative entities. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I do find that's very interesting because I've been told, and I'm sure that you're aware, oh, and I was ashamed to admit the fact that there is the guy that's studying ufology because of events that had occurred, and then now he's talking to the dead. But it's not just a question of talking to the dead. I wanted to find the truth. It came from deep inside me because there were some personal losses. And would you believe it? They started to come through. Do I believe that they are part of this negative force? No, I do not. Because there are there seems to be several aspects, I believe, that are operating here. And I'm not going to go into the religious interpretations. And I, I really don't like that word religion because it just immediately gets everyone's backs up but there is definitely dark and there is definitely light there is good and there is bad and we have that also within our connection with human beings and that is the truth i don't live in a snowflake society i'm black and white but that is the way it is here so what is to say that there is there are these forces which seems to be operating and i'll give you an example um, of this um, when i deal with psychic phenomena or clairvoyance I, I rather prefer the word translation because we're just we're all translators of information through here some people can narrow their field of conscious awareness and some people are too wide open but one of the things i found with regards to this is that you know when i was working on a particular book um with brenda butler the wonderful researcher at rendlesham and there was a, a point where I was becoming unwell. And I wondered whether or not there was some force or some energy that was trying to stop me from doing what I was doing. And I really felt that. And I've heard this before from other ufologists who have gone through a period where they just couldn't deal with it. They had to walk away from it. They felt better. It's like they could breathe again and they get sucked back into it. So there we are. I'm afraid I don't know because I've never seen a spirit personally. And when I sat in circle for three or four years, I got absolutely nothing. I went there, do you know, I went there drunk once because people said with the medium, you have to, loosen yourself up and I, I guess I was just a bit uh, a bit tight so I went drunk I had a bottle of wine and a number of beers and I went she could smell it on my breath and I sat in a I circle remember it. and I'll never forget it as we were meditating she's a lovely woman but she sat there with her teeth like this she's an old lady with her glasses 
when I, I opened my eyes and that was it. I, it, kicked, it set me off and I was crying with laughter. She could smell it on my back. <laughs> of course. It was well, at least she knew you had connected with spirit. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, is that she asked me what I was laughing about when I had to drum something up. So there was a belly dance in front of me, right? Egyptian belly dancer. So, but I got nothing through. So for that, Rick, I'm not qualified to answer that. I'm afraid I don't know. Okay, and I think I've got a question from yourself. In fact, I know I have. And uh, the question is, when you talked about um, um, the C5 and the work you did at Rendlesham Forest. Oh, yes, uh, yes. Yeah, and then then you talked about uh, the summoning, that story of the summoning yes. in the forest where the oh, creature yes. appeared in the middle. Yeah. How much do you think uh, we need to join this consciousness up? I mean, if we're giving out numbers, say, would it be... 10 people would it be 20 people would it be twenty-five thousand people yeah well i believe myself personally and that experience on the 8th of june 1998 happened at precisely 10 15 p.m at night and interestingly years later the amazing last one was 11 15 p.m at night but that i believe we had got the idea or i had at least from the song karen carpenter called in occupants and i wondered whether or not that was possible and what better place to do it than in a hot spot like rendlesham so that actually occurred we agreed yeah. that we would take no recording equipment with us there were three of us the, the media got it all wrong they said went with a bunch of friends there was get everything wrong there was myself ronnie and susan now i believe that if you have too big a group um i don't feel personally that uh, much is going to happen and this is for this reason that consciousness i believe has a lot to to play with this because if you have some people who are negative and some people are politic uh, positive sorry within the polarities of their conscious awareness it's not gonna it's not gonna work no the, the, I, the nasty thing about it is if you have a huge group and they'll witness it you've got more of a stronger testimony so the fewer who's going to believe you it's as if mm. it knows you know mm. this is the nasty thing about it how can you prove it it's, it's almost like you just it'd be so difficult but you just need that perfect balance don't you you need that yeah, harmony yes, yes. Uh, but i can see what you're saying like the the bigger yeah. the group the more chance it's, it's it, we know it's all anecdotal but it's evidence on mass yeah. Rather than I mean, just, I know there are people who have witnessed uh, UFOs, uh, uh, many of them, but we're talking about things that uh, you, when you're wishing for it or, you know, um, mm. incidents that occur. It, it, it's so mind boggling and so frustrating. You know, I mean, writing that book, I was so frustrated and you, you're banging your head against the wall because you know you're going to get attacked because you're, you're looking at <laughs> a particular point of it. Um, when there are many elements to it. I mean, as I said, I do believe the genuine UFOs, I'm not knocking them, the Roswell and other perhaps crashes, absolutely, I do believe they capture something physical there. But then we have this other kind of side to it where you've got all these cryptids and, you know, these hauntings and, you know, these werewolves, which I believe mm. real, absolutely real, yeah. You know, Bigfoot mm. as well. It's, you know, it's really weird. And, you know, are we, do, are we like you, you mentioned, Paul, you yourself, because are we instigating this? Are we, are we kind of reviving it? You know, uh, it's always been there, yeah. I think, you know, part, yeah. of, part of the cryptid phenomena. But are we, are, are we now, because we've, it's more in vogue, are we reviving it? Mm. It's like John D, you know, Queen Elizabeth yep. first uh, uh, advisor. I mean, I feel sorry for the guy because later on he was fascinated with scrying, basically peering in a mirror and summoning, you know, the spirits. And he got them. But unfortunately, they were, I believe, they termed it demonic then. They would do. And get him to do all sorts of bad things. So it's, it's on a broad range of so many things. That's why it's been pigeonholed into so many different boxes where perhaps it may be just only a few, you know, what we're dealing with. And mm. uh, actually not uh, uh, involving the crash saucers. You know, or the 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 physical stuff, which could be interdimensional. Now, there's talk of them perhaps coming from another dimension, other than from outer space. When we think about traveling at light speed, you know, as fantastic as it sounds, to reach us, if we could achieve that kind of power, to reach the center of our own galaxy, would take twenty five to thirty thousand years alone. So we're gonna we're gonna have to dismiss that ideology. Yeah, I did wonder about you. Sorry, Paul. No, it's fine. I, I was just going to say, I think if if we can dismiss that and throw that out of the window, it, 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 
it sort of just puts a big stamp on the major argument yeah. that yes. come, academics and science comes forward with, well, they can't possibly traverse the distances of the universe. Yes. Well, we don't have to. Whatever it is, it's using some kind of exotic science. They're already here. Yes, yeah, that's and, right, yeah. yes. And I wondered if, what, how it was taking, and I can understand why some researchers decompartmentalize certain subjects because it's all they can handle. I mean, you'll find, as, as you know, uh, Les and Paul, that when you get involved in UFOs, it starts leading to areas of consciousness and even to, yes, I'm fascinated now, a little bit later down the line, uh, much uh, later than uh, uh, you, Paul, in terms of the dogma. But I was wondered if we go to the greys, for instance. Now, when I had my experience, I mean, I didn't see hybridization or anything like that, but you hear so much about, but I was wondering how it was and why it was that these these apparent entities have no soul, they have no awareness of color, of time, of, of, of love, of taste, of smell, and, and also why, why they are interested in levels of reproduction for species that themselves could not reproduce. Now, I did think uh, many years after I had the initial experience back in 1989, to try and work out what this was, and I was uh, rewarded in um, 1996 with a revolutionary download. It's the only time I ever had it. I may dare, dare mention that it was published called Spirits in a Material World in Alien Encounters magazine. I have the copy, I still have, I think a couple of copies. But it was a theory based on the premise that it had something to do with the greys, and I may be wrong, it's just one theory out of many that had cloned themselves out of the process of reproduction. So basically, that us as spiritual entities, if I use that word lightly, if we had cloned ourselves continuously, would we cancel ourselves out of that um, creation process? And they have found a species that themselves that, that can reproduce and maybe this was why they were amalgamating part human part them whatever part that they are what's left of them but the vestiges into a creation of a new genus that was one idea that i had it could be i possible. disagree with that i understand but it was a theory nevertheless but there was also the also the other idea that as a species we were about to come to the end of our line i mean let's face it as a human species we are but we are not very uh, evolved in terms of, of how we treat and deal with one another and that they are creating some other new genus to survive elsewhere in another dimension of awareness or universe. I don't buy that either. I understand and I respect <laughs> that. We're going through all these we, theories and, 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 and also I, you, the good thing about being twins, the good thing about it is we're like yin and yang me and him argue, yeah. we, we constantly yeah. argue about certain the theories way, I understand. I, I know you're entitled to it I mean, it's just if, theories. You know so, some people believe they're from the future Show and they need to they need to redeem themselves or biologically but i stated quite logically that you know if they were going to do that and they were masters of time then they would pick a an era where we were respectfully medically clean they wouldn't pick this era why would they pick us from this era there's a lot you know Wait, well, sadly that we have that they they would pick an era where we're medically sound to actually suck up the G the dna and all the genome whatever it is so i don't believe that at all unless it's something to do with our mental advancement our, our intellectual advancement and i'm not saying we great intellects but uh, we'd have been medically clean thousands of, or more medically clean thousands and mm. thousands of years ago but Maybe the thought process wouldn't have been there. I don't know. I... Yeah, I don't know. But it's good. We, it's good to bash them out. These, these yeah, questions. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny, isn't it, how the Greys, if that was the case, if they were, you know, creating a hybridized program or whatever they wish to call it, is they themselves look embryonic. Yes. It's as though they're to illustrate the point of this is their agenda. It, you, you, again, we 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 hit a dead end. With yeah. it because it's just so yeah. damn strange, isn't it? I think Les is itching to get another question out here. I can see. Well, I, I, I'd like to piggyback on uh, of what you've said there, Ronald. Uh, and I saw this uh, comment on uh, a YouTube video. It's, um, it's been said before, but the comment is then they're, they're not extraterrestrial, they're inner terrestrial. They've always been here, and we're the ones who are visiting this planet. So, really, we're in a lab, farm, stroke, zoo scenario. It's mm. quite possible. I mean, we don't know, so it's an interesting point. Yeah, I mean, who, who knows, said that, so. Les? Who, who said that? I just picked it up on uh, just comment on uh, a random video on YouTube. I, uh, I thought have, it had been said in chat, but so I was just going to say, what a great term. Uh, yeah, you know, have we? Have well, we also? Like, it's like an inversion to the popular. Oh, yeah, belief, no, well, I know, it, yeah. I know. I just thought it yeah. sounded good, and and I'm just looking at comments there, and 
Rick Allen just made me chuckle because he said, Twin fight, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we also have to consider the other the other angle here that you know, if we are taking into aspects of consciousness and survival of that consciousness beyond this realm, we understand there are perhaps certain levels. And one idea I had, another idea I had, and Ronnie also works a, a, among the, the same premise is that is it possible that the non physical part that they reside in? Um, that that seems non-physical from us, like a wave, a dual wave uh, connection, that they are trying to bring themselves into our realm through this kind of like connection with mm. us, that they are stepping from their realm and into our realm. And I don't dispute the fact that they have been here for a very, very long time. Absolutely, I get that. I really understand that. But I have to acknowledge to you that you know, the, the, when you look at the greys and Ronnie quite rightfully stated, we've known this, they look like a, a, the beginning of the vestiges of an embryonic uh, formation of what a, a baby would be. And that they are, it's possible that we are dealing with something the system knows is far more complicated. And I will be surprised if those nameless faces, echelons, have got their hand with their claws in all of this. They know a lot about it what's was, going on. It's the reptilians as well, they, they were more military. So they're like big and strong, aren't they? And, the dinosaur is uh, prehistoric, you know, it's formidable. They just seem to have this kind of, what's the word I can use? They have this kind of familiarity to us in that kind of, in that kind of respect, you know, they mm. seem to define something, that's the word, define something. I don't know about the jelly men. I'm not sure about them. <laughs> so. ah, well, that kind of leads me into the next question, uh, actually. The jelly because, men. Uh, yeah, Ian Linney is asking, uh, <laughs> Ian. what's Jelly Men? <laughs> I knew he'd ask something like that. It's <laughs> Philip Mantle uh, covered the case. Uh, uh, the jelly man. I don't know. He, he covered <laughs> the case where this boy saw these Jelly Men and it was reported. It's one of these reports. I, d I don't know where it's from. Um, the British, I think it was England. I got the impression it was from England, but uh, I hadn't done too much research into that because... You know, I don't discount it. The boy probably saw something inside the source of some glob of goo or whatever it was. But it, it illustrates the point that there's so many varied aliens, the Vulcans, the blonde head, blue eyed, and people believe they are from Andromeda or whatever system they come from. Where is it they come from? I do know, but I've just my memory's gone blank. You know, the, the, the beautiful, yes. the beautiful Jacqueline Suzanne wrote a fiction book about them. Actually, but Yargo. Yargo called Yargo. Um, so we go on and on and on. The Greys were not set, although they reported loosely, I gather, if the Roswell crash did happen. I have to say that, but I do believe personally it did because we've got no proof whatsoever but i gather they were little men with big heads so they they've they've been around for a smattering of time you know even the prehistoric uh, dated uh, images of them we have to be very careful because people do actually add things i'm going to say that respectfully they they can use cgi or they can make you believe that this is a a, a cave painting of the alien graves which most of them i don't believe i'll give you an example of that can i just give you an example yeah please do yeah i hate people who who trick you it's like yeah. youtube years ago there were these skeletons these huge skeletons they found these archaeologists apparently found all these massive skeletons throughout the world and they were unearthed and you saw the the skulls and the jawbone well I, it, this was this was years ago, but we still had software we could augment. You can close in on it. I was curious about this, so I honed in on a tooth, a particular it had a particular crack in it, and there were about three photographs of different skulls uh, reportedly seen throughout the world, or reportedly photographed. Well, I looked at the one next to it, and fortunately, his jaw was visible. And guess what? He had the same crack on the same tooth. Oh, I couldn't see the third one clearly, but you can bet Bob Dollar that was uh, the same crack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wrote to this group and said to them, uh, not being funny, but your your giant has uh, been photoshopped. I never heard anything back from him. <laughs> so I can't stand it. So this is what muddies it even further oh, when you have it. people saying, no, 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 they're on cave paintings. Oh. I'm, not dis I'm not discounting the fact that there have been strange astronauts, which there have. Eric Van Daniken has reported them. You know, I believe them but when they look very closely like the greys you begin to think mm, you know there's uh his were actually the 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 alien sea reported had helmets on i believe they were very strange looking things so they're more credible i believe than when you see these recent ones with the greys actually etched into the the, the rock 
you know i just yeah. I, it, this even makes it worse because you're trying to define what is real and what is not it is a mess unfortunately yeah. it's a big yeah. mess yeah and and just to even if you thought the photoshopping uh, images was bad then where is this ai going because mm. you confuse matters i yeah. think now we can now we've got a new tool at our disposal where uh, there was a um, uh, someone who is in uh, a high place within our uh, england here within governance and was stating oh that wasn't me it was ai no so i understand ai the acronym has been completely misled there's no such thing as artificial intelligence right now they'll probably be right oh you're wrong but uh, no we're quite right Yes, they're based on algorithms. Uh, computers cannot think, they never will for a long time. They're as thick as bricks, they process. They're brilliant <laughs> at processing, but they cannot think. Consciously. Also, think. AI art has to be derived from a pool of reservoir of pictures already composed by artists, added with a degree of randomization and prompts. It needs, it needs, a, it needs a footing, a platform to work from. They can't conjure these up themselves i had an argument with someone about this who i do believe people actually are fallen for the ai so the people who are promoting this will inevitably use this again as a weapon so that if there is an error or something terrible happens they'll blame ai rather than themselves i used to program computers i know a lot about them so even the 3d systems even the 3d they call it 3d thought the quantum processes uh, where they can transfer binary from zero to one or either. It can be either zero or one. That's why they've got 3D thought. It's not thought at all. It's just processing power. It's speed. So, yeah, but you're you're quite right. Absolutely, Les, with this new tool they have at the disposal, it's kind of muddy even more. The good thing at present with it, it's not very good at doing hands. So if you see six or seven fingers, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. there's a problem. That's the, that's the dead giveaway today, but it, that might be all uh, eradicated by next week. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, yeah. oh, it will achieve it in the end, I would imagine. But not uh, have, can you see us with six fingers? <laughs> We're AI. It's clever. Don't get me wrong. It's very, very clever. It's brilliant. We're going to uh, need this. As you say, Ronnie, there's no original form to it. It's it's taking what everybody's done, what's available on the internet for the last yeah. X number of years amalgamated it and as you say just one simple prompt will get you where that image that's right it needs resources at the moment i dare say i'm not going to knock it because in a few hundred years time our grandfather told us that they will achieve artificial intelligence but certainly not with zeros and ones I, binary, I, binary I, no, yeah no. i think i think people have got the wrong idea and they're thinking that this ai you is and a, i have argued about it is a conscious thinking machine that has its own form of consciousness like we do a sentient it's, being yeah it does not no it is just based on variables it's very clever yeah trust me we're going to have to rely on that i believe if we do survive the future and it's a good future it will be indispensable for us yeah. totally i'm all it but oh, i yeah. welcome any kind of technology I welcome any kind of, you know, advancement. The trouble is... Well, you can't, even, uh, you can't even use a food mixer. Dear, listen, the trouble <laughs> is, is that it's always abused. That's the problem, you see? There's yes. nothing wrong with it. It's always abused. And we're seeing it, as you rightly said, Liz, as you rightly stated, people are doing it now to contract these images of historical giants with people. You can, there's always a, you can tell with AI art. There's, there's, at the moment, you can tell. There's a kind of quality to it that you know it's AI. Mm. Apart from the fingers, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, that's we could have a whole discussion, a whole show on just AI. Uh, AI. Oh, yeah. no, 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 please. Have, no. You, have you got, <laughs> is, there, is there more questions? Left? We've got lots. I've got a, loads to get through here. Well, we better keep going with them if, if you guys are okay with that. We're fine. We're yeah. cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Just an observation no, from uh, Tina. I love the collection on the shelves behind you, Ronnie. Yeah. Please. Well, I have to I have to say to you that some of those are um, well a lot of them are actually um, figures that are um, what do they call them they're collect they are collectors science and fiction. one of them is Guanji from the from yeah. the Ray Harryhausen film um, Valley of Guanji that was one done years ago that I loved and they actually did the full replica of him I, it was a bit of uh, money to spend out but I got him and also the dinosaur from uh, um, Valley one, of Guanji no one million years BC but. This is where it gets nasty, doesn't it? Oh, my Lord. 
you're into UFOs and psychic phenomena. Look at that. Oh, dear Lord, you, you're creative. You have an imagination. It's like the press years ago, they used to say, but they write this and they write that. As though putting you in a category that you are to be a blank canvas, that you have to have no interest at all when you have these experiences. But yes, I'm very proud of them. I, I, I They bring a lot of love and, and warmth and delight. I think creativity with all of us sometimes. It, it's something I love. You know, it's like um, stepping outside of the world that we live in. And it's not because of, the, you know, our interaction with UFOs or psychic phenomena. It's because the world sometimes is not a good place. And sometimes you just want to walk through a door and go somewhere where you feel like, wow, I want to be here. Yeah, I love video games, space games and all that. So that's, <coughs> yeah, I'm a geek human. already. So yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm a human. I'm a geek because okay. really, I love it, video games. <laughs> but but it's, it's a detachment, like you've just said, from this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Not, not, you so, not so great reality that we're in at the moment. Uh, yes. You know, not to put oh, too much no. of a downer on things. So come on, Les, hit us with another question. Okay, Debbie Shaw is uh, uh, saying Anne Strieber was convinced there was a connection between the afterlife <laughs> and the visitors. Yes, it is, is, is possible. And I know um, that Whitley Strieber, a brilliant author and, and um, researcher, has investigated this. I was very honoured many long years ago when they had their communion um, uh, connection. Um, and I had a letter, a note really, from Whitley Strieber, um, because we belonged to their network, then it was all through the post, then we didn't have the internet. And I absolutely agree that there could possibly be a connection between some of these visitors and what we call the afterlife. Again, we they have been decompartmentalized into various subjects, like there are a million miles apart from each other. And as we all know, that you know, that one connects with the other. And I believe that there is every uh, you know, truth in that, because when we are human here, Any possibility. Yeah, we, we, we are human here. But what is to say when we pass back, what we will transmute into then? We don't know. This is fascinating. We're still trying to look into those areas of what will become of us, what ca what happens to us beyond this level of reality. Yeah, but are they coming from there? Or, you know, we don't we, know. We don't but know. that is actually yeah. a, a, quite a possible. Absolutely. It's plausible because we just don't know. This That's is what right. we're doing. We're trying to just open those boxes and, you know, question it. Just That's question right. it. Okay, so I don't know if you want to run with this one, Paul. I'll throw, I'll throw it on the screen now uh, from Martin Abbas. Uh, or do you want to pick up it later on? Uh, Philip, what are your well, thoughts on the NDAs any... and what can we take from them, if anything? Do you want to run with that now or do you want to move on with uh, something? Well, we'll, well, well, let's, let's treat this one a little bit more than a... Well, they're all questions, aren't they? Let's face it, and everybody's question is valid. But, yeah, we, we, he's, he's spoken about now, so we may as well. So what are your thoughts on... Uh, any N NDEs? Well, the near-death experience is a transformative uh, encounter that the individual has when they temporarily die and they pass over. They have uh, uh, periods of timelessness, of communication of telepathy and all this type of thing. And what's interesting, when they come back to the body, um, if the body is diseased, the body sometimes goes into full repair. Now, interestingly enough, the abduction phenomena happens along those same premise, but on a different mm -hmm. level altogether. And this is where we're trying to make the connection. So, yeah, I'll just put that out there for you. Yeah. Well, that's why I, I, I was sort of going to come to that when we started yeah. talk, talking after the questions. Yes, uh, yeah. we'll talk, let's just stay with the abduction because it probably ties in with what Martin's saying for a moment. And this, this the, the witness will report floating through the wall. And yes. so we've got this non-physical. Is it possible that what they're sensing and what they're experiencing is what we some people would call the soul, the essence of the being, and the actual physicals still laid in the bed? Yes, uh, that's right. Do, do you know what I mean? Because yeah. otherwise we get people trying to untangle it and somehow this exotic science has, I don't know, what's the word? It's, it's yeah. deconstructed the physical and took us through a solid wall. But in, when in actual fact it could be just... As, as simple, if simple's the word, as of, as our soul being taken. If, yes, and, that's right. Yes, and, and yes, yeah, I, absolutely, I, I, Paul. Yeah, these are similar to outer body experiences, where you know where people travel and uh, or is remote viewing the same thing? And are we just using different words to to describe the same thing? Are we actually leaving our bodies and going to these places? Is it just the intermind connection? And we're talking about the vast distances of space, which we touched on earlier. Is it? Is it as? And obviously, we can't tra traverse those distances with science. But is the intermind connection just doing it instantly? 
Yes, in 1996, in an article I had published, very honoured, and it was my very first published piece of work, um, it, it tackled this question with regard to the parallels to be made between the NDE and the abduction phenomena. Now, we have to understand that when we are dealing with the soul, as people call it, or the, the etheric part of what we are, that is the real part of what we are. It's rather like a signal going into a mobile phone. People think, oh, this is the phone, I've got it, this is the hardware. Well, it's not. The phone is actually the signal because that's generating all of that's needed to, to make it work, bar from a little bit of energy as we do in a biological form, in a technical form with a phone. So, when the greys let's just give an example here it could be yeah. the dogman it could be the uh, the sasquatch it doesn't matter when they take you outside of this sphere of reality what they are doing is they are matching them the, you to their level of interaction they have taken you to a point within space and time like the halfway house where interaction is then possible and remember remember as well um elements of stigma, stigmatism and all that type of thing where people start to believe. What, what happens with an NDE when in a lot of cases they come back to the body and they're healed, the person who's been taken into the filled frequency of reality where the Grey's domain exists, where there is a timeless space this connection, it could be possible that because they're taking out of the normal processing of time that conscious recollection is not achievable because the biological hardware is not working to its, uh, to its normal level. And what they do to the etheric body, the blueprint, the, the reality of what you are, when that's returned back to the physical counterpart, that will then carry the, uh, the implant or whatever they've done to you, the scars, whatever. It's, it's a possible theory that I've been working on for some years. So I believe that what we're looking at here, and Paul knows this, so I can see his smiling because it's, <laughs> Paul is so clever, he's the man and he, he there is this interdimensional link, this interdimensional connection that this force is so clever. It seems to know us better than we know ourselves. It knows how to utilize the mind. It knows how to bring us into their reality. It knows how to control time. But I believe there is something it will. And this is the underlining factor. What is this force after? Why does it hide within the shadows? Why is there is this continuous theme that we're seeing where, oh, you know, if I, if I could go down to the bar and have a pint with the werewolf, um, I'm sure Paul will be first in line. He deserves that more than anyone else through his research. But I want to say, look, mate, what on earth is going on with you guys? Yeah. What is it you want? I actually do believe in a spirit world. Yes, I believe yes. in what we, mm. we call heaven because yeah. it, this is, I believe, separate from uh, what we're discussing here, because I don't believe anything negative <clears throat> would come from that, you know. But Anne Streber, her oh, yes. point is, yes, we have to consider yes. that, you know, because and I gather she's referring to that in a benevolent kind of way, because I believe Whitney Streber... He's, he's, uh, he's written a book, as is, is one of his books, the, one of the latest ones. I wish I could remember the title, and it's Letters from... And, and and it's all communication with his wife. With, with his wife, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's quite possible. I mean, but uh, I would imagine that would be a benevolence rather than mm. the terror we witness yeah. here at present. And, and, uh, I've just for, I've got to just say this, but when you said Paul knows and look at Paul, he's laughing. Do you know something? <laughs> and and, and I'm, I'm opening myself up here to people in chat here for, for a little bit of Mickey taking, but sometimes I think of myself a little bit like Columbo because I do think, I, I, I do actually, sometimes people are talking to me and I, I, I might actually not let on. I, I don't understand. But I, I do actually. Oh understand yes, everything you say. yes. <laughs> but, but I'm just, I'm just formulating things and not trying to trip anybody up. But it's just good to, to give people, not you guys, but the the, the upper yeah. path. You know what I mean? Yes, anyway, absolutely. Like, yeah. Okay. Shall I disappear for a bit and uh, you can? Uh, move yeah, on. yeah. I thought you'd got loads of questions because I know I we're going to bother you. But uh, no, we'll do another fifteen minutes of and then come back to questions. Then yeah. Okay. I'll see you a bit. That that is great and. Uh, where are we then? Uh, we, do you want to talk about any of the cases in the books? But you talked about John D earlier. Uh, yeah. you, you mentioned John D, and then you talked about looking into the mirror, and a, a lot like the Ouija board. And I said to you earlier, it, it's just it's just a tool. We could perhaps use anything with the correct yeah. sort of channeling of the mind. He looked into obsidian, into the obsidian mirror. Yes. Uh, am I correct? This this black. Um, mm, yes. Yeah. 
natural. I strength. have tried it. I have tried scrying. I've tried all sorts. It didn't work. I tried it. Well, it did for ages. me. I tried mm. it, and even sitting in circle. This is very strange, because I didn't want it so badly. I just went there because Philip went there, Susan, and I was curious, so I went there because a medium I saw many years ago. She said, "You'll you'll open up." psychically when you're 40 i didn't it's now my 50s that i've opened up just slightly i have no control over it certain things i've seen that came true and they're like i mean it's very very few and far between uh and uh, they just happen i just see something like a picture of film and then it happens but it's very very rare and i don't know when it's going to happen so but it's like everything i've tried to do has failed and i liken it to a mirror ironically a mirror that it reflects everything back, you know. And when you let go, when you just let go, things happen. You yeah. know, I wasn't thinking about, I mean, I, I sat in circle for all those years, I got absolutely nothing through. I tried scrying. Well, you were trying, that, you were tr that's the word, you were yeah. trying. Try that's it, trying yeah. too hard. Yeah, and scrying, I got nothing through. No, but... I, I'm, I'm, once again, apologies, I'm cutting through you, what you're saying, but I want you to, for, for people that don't know, and for me that's not got loads of knowledge of it, I want you to tell us about scrying, but, First of all, you, yeah, yeah, I, I can, yeah, as well. yeah, you can. I had an experience back in 1999. Now, this is interesting, and I, this has been documented. I believe I put it in Reaching for the Divine when that was published. Um, now, in 1998, in the 8th of June, we summoned a UFO in Renishan Forest. We took no, I was not interested. No, no, we, I was not interested in bringing proof or film footage. I'm way past that point. I am fed up with people saying, Where's your proof? Well, we don't have any. It was to be a personal experience that satisfied a curiosity that I was looking for. Now, a year later, in 1999, in that year, I lost a friend to cancer. He was 20. And before he passed over, I worked out the original manuscript called The Eternal Cosmic Corridor that later became Reaching for the Divine. It's, it's out of print now. It's out of the publishers. Uh, it's, the book's out of print. But anyway, so... Before he was going to die, my friend was going to die because he knew he was dying. I said to him, can you do me a favor? Can you show yourself to me after you passed? And, he, and I thought he was going to hit me. He, wouldn't, he wasn't like that. But he said, how do you expect me to do that? And he said, I'll beam down like they do on Star Trek. Okay. These, now, on the 25th of June, 1999, he passed over. So I walked in after the funeral and everything into a bookstore, second-hand bookstore. He used to go to the occult section, the occult section, and a book fell on the floor, and it was called Reunions. And I have the book up on my shelf, Reunions by Dr. Raymond Moody, How to Contact the uh, Those on the Other Side by Scrying Using a Mirror. Yeah. So I performed the experiment, and uh, other than seeing the face of Thomas' tank engine in the mirror, nothing happened. A little bit later... <laughs> in the winter, when I came home and I sat in the kitchen looking through the conservatory glass windows um, and through to the conservatory glass doors themselves, it was plain and clear. Our garden has got a high wall and a garage entrance is locked. So there was glass, a glass, you yeah, said. The, my friend had appeared and he walked, he turned to face me. He had his white t shirt, blue jeans, and cap on. There was no communication, but he looked at me as if to say, What's the problem? like this with his hand. And I was so shocked, I stood up, he was clear. And then he started to disappear like um, they do on Star Trek, all these lights. And it's interesting, isn't it? How, you know, I, I know that people tell me how it is, but we still don't know that my willingness to summon a UFO in Rendlesham Forest, my willingness to summon a dead friend who appeared who was there in front of me you saw him through the glass they he, do it with mirrors he was there in front of me and he was physical like i'm seeing you so you know there must have been some kind of interaction on a conscious level between either one to the other or this like the centralized connection linked to the pool of all that is that they knew and if it comes from the heart if it comes from deep within if it comes from within your soul you i believe that then there is a calling it's not like i'm crying wolf and i want it it has to come on a deep need but there again there's another part of the phenomena which is nasty and comes in when you're not expecting it. It just suddenly turns up, knocks you off guard. Yeah, the ancients used to even use water for it, or mm. anything reflective. Glass. And that, they do it with mirrors. Actually, that's Nagatha Christie. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it is. They do it with mirrors. They do it with mirrors. Um, and and the glass, again, you see um, me going through glass in 1989 through the abduction. 
and then seeing my friend through glass, through the glass uh, windows, uh, the doors actually, they're the doors of the conservatory. All this thing about going through matter always been like a question mark within my own personal little journey. It's all, my puzzle is, my, my, the puzzle has been, how on earth are we able to get through physical matter? How is that possible? And then you have this emergence of these other phenomena, which is operating on interdimensional levels of reality. So the question is very important. So, you know, that that's, that's my experience with regards to the scrying. And it was scrying because I used a mirror uh, to yeah. beforehand to perform the experiment. But it's like you said again, and it's, I walked away from it's it. a focal point. That's all it is, isn't yeah. it? It's a focal point. It, it, that's right. It, it, it You're appears right. to be. And, uh, I don't know. It's it is. It's fascinating, and I don't know where 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 do you see yourself moving forward with this, or have you not looked beyond the now? Do you, you know, because you you're talking about these are theories I'm working on. These are. Do you, yeah. I, I, I want to move to the next level. I said this. I think I don't. I think I did mention it to Steve Mira that what I want to do is uh, delve into the the un, un, what can I call it? The unthinkable. Yes. <laughs> I, I haven't mean. had the gumption to actually wish to see these alleged or so-called greys, but there is something to them. There is. But, but, but now you're getting it. I want to do it because I want to experiment again, because we did a lot of experiments 25 years ago. Yes. And we, we didn't after that, we did because we, we did hundreds of work on the Ouija board, hundreds, sorry, hundreds of thousands of hours, I would imagine, for years and years on that, virtually every night, yeah. until I tired of it, I realized that uh, we were getting nowhere with it. I'll give my reasons no. in one of the books, I think. But now, to actually try and wish to see something, but there again, I I can't, uh, I, I can't bring myself to do it yet. I'm a little bit nervous because you know, be careful what you wish for. But do you think uh, there's a time and a place? And and probably back then you, you just weren't ready. But now, after all this research, after after everything else, and speaking to all these other people who've, who've seen, have experienced, and shared their views, now you're more open. Well, you're wanting to do it. But it sounds yeah, a bit. Yeah, you know, it reminds me of that scene from The Exorcist when it actually happens. You have a priest there, and his his. Uh, you know, anointing himself and he's showing the cross. I don't know. Yes, I am. I Not yet. Perhaps in the next few years, I will do it. It, it seems pathetic to other people, but I want to know what this is. If but it's it, to do with mind. It almost seems, though, listening to you say that, uh, Ronnie, that, that you, you're expecting a darker side of this phenomena to come through. Mm. You know, yes, absolutely. And I, I, where I see myself, well, I don't know, Paul, I think that you just go with your gut reaction, you go where the, the research takes you. I mean, to be honest with you, it is a, a mess, to be, to, to be honest with you, because the, the, the phenomena is so vast. And, and there's so much that's so involved. Um, and, and I believe and think that all we're after, like yourself, is the penultimate truth of what this all means. I, I've had this dream in my head that, you know, that these visitors coming, like, I suppose, with V, but not nasty and coming and saying that we're here to help you and to evolve and all this type of thing. But it's never going to happen. I don't believe that it's going to happen because the way that we're seeing this, um, this phenomena evolving, is not really telling us that we're linking with something that's totally benevolent in well, nature. the testimony contests it, exactly yeah. what's happening. They've done yeah. nothing. They've done nothing for us. You have well, people yeah. arguing this. They've done absolutely nothing. And, and then you've got, the, the, you, have, you have people saying, well, they've disarmed nuclear warheads, so surely it's... To, but it's almost... You can turn that on its head and say, no, maybe they're protecting their asset. Yes, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Me, we, are we the asset, basically? And yeah, there we have... And, and there you have it, as the Irish lo loving mm -hmm. Irish say, and there you have it, the question. So so if, uh, if you... And to both of you, if you could experience just one part of this... Uh, you know, like on your bucket list, what would it be? Well, I would like to see, forgive me, I, I think that, the, I, I believe that your question I don't know is, what you're going to say. I would like to see the werewolf. I'd like no. to see the dog. No, you don't. No, you don't. I, it would be an amazing specimen to see. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying that that, that would, and, you know, I know it's scary and I, and I, 
totally respect all those other people that have had the experiences with them. But I think, you know, it, when you're in the eye of the hurricane, if you are there, then you will have more of an understanding perhaps of this phenomenon because you are in the rawness of that experience because we are able to pick up as well, not just them, but we as well. I know yeah, that a lot of that's fear. You don't always have to wish for it because it happens to people, uh, you know, unannounced. Yeah, it just happens, well, doesn't it? Well, there's the thing, not, not just with the cryptid phenomena, with all... All, all types of the unexplained. Mm. Most of it occurs when we're least expecting it, doesn't it? You know, what, mm. you know what, it's kind of beyond the thinking mind when we're just relaxed and when we're just sort of, I don't know, totally not expecting to see it. I know that you've said like, you know, you've, 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 you've concentrated and things have come through, but for a lot of people, it just hits some smack between eyes when they're least expecting it. Mm. People say, you know, and th then once again, I went on about earlier, are we actually seeing some of these things? And that's not such a stupid question when we we are actually seeing them. But you hear the witness say, I held my camera up or my phone up to take a picture. I couldn't see it. Yet I could see it with the naked eye. Mm. So are, are we being, is, is it a science that's just been performed on us and we're not even unaware because obviously... We're, we're, the, we're the lab rats. That, that, <laughs> yes. Uh, that would suggest that it's inside us, that we're yeah. being projected. But uh, there again, there's always the physical, not always, but sometimes, a lot of times, it's physical evidence for the people themselves, like the toenail yeah. of the reptilians or the, the imprints of giant wolves. You know, they, mm. they have these. It's really weird, isn't it? It's very well, weird. Well, you know, the, the experiences I had in childhood and in my... My, my third, well, from 1990, I don't know, I think in 93 to 1998, where that were when there were the physical marks. Mm -hmm. well, you know, a lot of people could have said, well, you, you know, this, the, you, it's lucid dreaming, you're just imagining no, no. this. And, but not when you're waking up with scars on your body. So yes. there's the physical as well. So yeah. one part of what I say, I'm contradicting myself because mm -hmm. it's, it's leaving a physical. I, you know, I, I wish I'd got an answer. And that's what the phenomena does. It's so clever. It's so smart. And I believe that it, the, these levels of contradiction or what we would call of high strangeness is there. And the force, the phenomena behind most of this is aware of this and knows mm -hmm. that you it's trying to. It's like I said before, that the phenomena could be using even regressionists with regards to certain people helping abductees telling them one thing and that has happened before and telling yeah. another one in something entirely different <laughs> like, like, to further mud as you said earlier correct mud, muddy the water. Yeah. that's right that's right and, and, yeah. but, but there's so there's so many people from all walks of life that is, that see things when they least expect it i mean jessica's i'm not going to bring her in but jessica's doing moderating tonight she stayed in a cottage i can see her below screen looking at me now don't worry i'm not going to put you on screen <laughs> but stayed in a cottage she's in bed dead of night in this cottage that she's not familiar with she's not used to seeing ghosts or apparitions she's not somebody that says she sees these things so I, I, i'm laid in bed woke up and looked and at side of bed there's a little girl just looking at me Mm. And and then I think she said she closed her eyes and she'd gone. Mm. And I wonder how many people are having these experiences, and and just choosing to say nothing. We need we need voices on mass mm. to get this mm. ball rolling and gathering more momentum. But whether that'll ever happen, I don't know. I think we need a little bit more understanding from this force to know about it, about it and how we can inter interconnect with it as opposed to just coming in and going out because it's not giving us any answers. That's what we're seeking. We're, we're hoping for these answers, but yeah. we're not getting any we're from the werewolves, any. from the Sasquatch, from the <laughs> UFO knots, you name it. You know, I mean, you, you reported one of these werewolves, and I've never forgotten it, that had an earring in its ear. Yeah. Just it just doesn't make sense, does it? It doesn't make sense. Uh, and and do, do, do you know, guys, I'm, I think we've got 15 minutes. I'm going to have to pull yeah. Les in to get through, is, if that's okay with you, to pull yeah, yes, fine, some yeah, of these questions cool. out yeah. of, of the chat because otherwise we'll get uh, yeah, yeah. A, a bit of a stick for that, won't we? Have you got some yeah, questions? I'll, I'll, I will get hung, drawn, Thank and you. quartered if I don't get some more uh, questions out. And uh, great show tonight, guys, and thank you very much for coming on. Oh, thank, you. We're, we're thank you. We're on it. Thank you. It's so easy for me this because Ron and Phil have just never stopped. It's been great. Well, uh, do you know uh, the thing is you can go round in a circle with this and go round and round, hmm. and it's like, but it's we love it. We're all a part of that. It's it's amazing. Okay, not so much questions. These first ones, Paul, but I'll just throw them up. 
uh, Olufsen one. Um, next for Paul, first post, long term watcher. So, next for yeah, I'm familiar with it, mate. And uh, yeah. if we know each other, or even if we don't, feel free to connect. Thank you. Yeah, and I'll just get rid of this. Just bear with me while I just scroll through some other non question types. Uh, right, just I'll put that on screen from Mark Jones. Anything that can be imagined that is possible <laughs> can be created here. Yes, so that's, that's true. If what we you have the materials as well. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Everything is a creation yeah, of the mind. That's quite right. Yeah. Mm. That's right. Nothing uh, is impossible. Let's have a look then. Uh, Matt Hopper, Hollywood, seeds our consciousness with its deceptive uh, archetype. Architects, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we hear a lot of that, Matt, yeah. within the Hollywood infrastructure, and I think a lot of this is coming out, and also the darker aspects of this, um, which is very disturbing. Subliminal messaging. Subliminal messaging, yeah. subliminal programming on the conscious level, and uh, how it affects individuals, because I believe that our system is not just, uh, you know, the paranormal, but there are very own people here, um, and I see people, I'm not so sure what they are, um, some of them, um, but they're able to to, I believe, um, work with these psychological and mental programs. And, and it's it's evil. It's really evil. It's disgusting. But, what, but what's, what's influencing Hollywood? Mm, do, do yeah, you know, exactly. Do, 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 do you know, are, are the people within that scene, what's influencing them and, and what do they derive from it? Are, are they even aware that they're being influenced? I well, would think that, that they are. I yeah, think, yeah, they're, they're, I think they're, they're aware they're of aware. something. Yeah, uh, yeah, much more, more, more um, uh, informed than we are. And if yeah. they're tempted with that, who's going to say no with that? Because you're mm. sucked in and then you're going to yeah. do what you're told, aren't you? But yeah. um, these, these echelons at the top, um, well, we, we'd like to meet them and have a private word with them. I don't think we'd come out alive because they're telling us one thing that we should be looking into, and they've probably got their hands right into all the esoteric. You uh, can't nature. Beat them. They will have to shoot you. For yes. This. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, okay. Next well, question. at this point, then I'm just going to bring on uh, the two books uh, that you, your two recent books, and you can probably tell us a little bit more about them and where they can be. Uh, gotten from. I know one's due out in July, and we'll put that on the screen now. Ah, yes. So, Terrestrial Trespassers, um, The Grey's Abductions and Errors of High Strangeness. Um, uh, you know, Paul has been doing a lot of work in Bempton in his area, mm. and when I started reading Paul's books, he was the one that gave me the idea about these areas, those locations of high strangeness, and I wondered about Rendlesham as well. Uh, being a hotspot or a nest of this activity. So I was very blessed, and Paul's work is also in that book. I've mentioned Paul and his work, a brilliant researcher, a lovely guy. But the book itself is, is about the greys, the abductions, and how uh, I believe that there are several possibilities that we have to look into, especially consciousness, there is consciousness, and also would you believe at the end of our antedevillian past going into areas of Mesopotamia and into the reality of the creation of our species. I'm not saying that the greys were responsible, but I believe that there was some kind of what we would call extraterrestrial influence. Forget the fairy tale version that we've been sold, which by the way, the system likes to promote, no. So, and now that's been introduced um, by James Thomas, who deals with a lot of um, uh, demonology and also wonderfully written by the forward with Peter Robbins, a dear good friend um, as well. So, Mine Illusions has been published again by the Philip Mantle, the wonderful Philip Mantle. I, um, what I do is I actually question a lot of it. So it's actually opening the boxes and questioning it, especially time travel as well. Uh, there is something else. There is something else, I believe. Uh, being that time is a construct, it is a human construct that is unshakable. So, but there is something else. So, I look into all these phenomena, especially the the werewolves. I was very privileged to be in contact with Martin Groves, uh, deputy sheriff, who encountered these beasts thirty years ago. So, I was very honoured that he allowed me to use a piece of his work in there, uh, analysing it. And yes, he saw them with his uh, with his friend, his colleague, who was also, I believe, a deputy sheriff. Uh, 30 years ago. So it looks into the strange and mysterious worlds of these aliens and the, the cryptids as well. So, Thank you. Okay, and uh, I'll move on with this one from 1423. Do the guys believe these spirits and entities are drawn to the positive or the negative energy 
of those living as a property? Or is it the entity's own energy that manifests on whoever happens to be close to them? Yeah, I, I mean, we were, this was quite insulting because when we had the encounters when we were younger, it was because we were negative. We were anything but, no. we weren't negative at all. No. So no, it doesn't draw, I don't personally, I might be wrong, but from my own experience, we, we're not negative. We're, we're two of the most positive people. It sounds negative what we're discussing because in looking at the, looking at the darker aspects of this, it is looking at the darker, not the benevolence. You have to have, there's two sides to a coin. But no, I don't, I don't believe that at all. I, I, do, I do think that 14 has a point because when people dabble with the dark arts, they're asking for trouble. So it's a, it's, it's a fine line. Yes and no, but certainly not with people like us. We, we, we're we never negative, but I, we've had negative experiences. Yeah, I, I think also that I understand what 1423 says. I believe that if there's any host that goes in that uh, the energy is drawn to, then it will come there anyway. Um, it seems to, as Paul knows, we all we all know there seems to be yeah. this kind of like fear connection link. So I don't think it it matters what level, aware or not aware, it's still going to come in on that level. I believe that's a good question. It is yeah. a very good question. Very good. Yes, yeah. thank, thank you. you. Fourteen twenty three. Okay, so I, I am conscious of the time, guys, and uh, I'm going to try and uh, get some of these on screen. Rick <laughs> Allen, we are being divided. <laughs> Uh, we certainly are being divided, to, and that is even on a human level. We can see what's going on. We can see what the system is doing. Sorry, that's Paul. The plan. No, no need to be. That's the plan, and uh, we've had Rick on. We, you know, his excellent theories and takes on what's happening. So we'll have yes. to do that again, Rick. And uh, yeah, I, he, I think he's asking the question, and he already knows the answer. To, oh, yes, does, obviously. They they are trying to disrupt our. Our, our reality they're trying to disrupt our spirituality they are trying to every time every single time that we are trying to lift ourselves up this darker force seems to, to come in and push us down now i believe it's like a bubble and that when you yourself personally start to get outside of that bubble bubble sorry there are the, it always seems in your life that there are things to pull you back down all the negative things that this force will use to bring you back down no we will so yes i believe definitely that the system knows what it's doing on a level that it believes that we don't know what's really happening so i agree and there's another yeah. one from rick and there's a yeah, yeah just a follow-up from rick yes, and rick, rick has actually got absolutely. another one up. Rick, yeah yes. if you scare a population you can manipulate them easy yes, that's right yeah. you can you indeed. break their confidence you shatter yeah. their morals yes that's right yeah. uh, what did they say i'm not a i am not a number i am a free man from that the prison, prison though, wasn't it? It? yeah 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 <laughs> see us running yeah. out and they're trying to catch us <laughs> okay lee roscoe is asking what did the kinsellas learn from brenda butler and think of the story uh, of david daniels yes well jessica um uh, thank you jessica well that is a very complicated story and let me tell you something about that I mean, I, 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 yes yeah, I, I understand riverton pie so it's very interesting That's i your, can't yeah your i can't go into too much detail because it's going to take up a hell of a lot of time but mm. there was a peer involved um lord admiral um hill norton um admiral also ralph, Fleet, weren't it? that's right there was also um ralph noise who was linked with the ministry of defense that went on to write his own science fiction book called um uh oh did you know what i forgot that i've got the book up there mm. and the, the secret prophet i think it was um and and a host of other top ufologists including the late lieutenant Lord stevens now there's a little bit of irony with david daniels because we believe that we had met him long before we had met brenda butler and while we were visiting rendlesham that we is all we sure we can't be sure but the but this this thing whatever it was this guy this reptilian whatever it was had been there and there's that and we know that the uh, authorities wanted him so that is another story another compartment but brenda is very loving and very giving and she associated more with david daniels than a lot of the people around her because that's the type of uh, lass that she is but make no mistake brenda is on the ball and, and very sharp as a knife although she's not being uh, too well at the moment but, I but also i've actually held residue that they because she was all there and in involved in the 1980 event of the residue of the uh, lava type material that Colonel Charles Houghton, when we met him as well, he's he's there on the ball, that that I've held it. it it's remarkable. This, so is this the stuff there. that dripped off the That's correct. That's, yeah, yeah. that's correct. I don't think I saw that myself. You, you don't. don't. I did, yeah. 
Mm. That's, so who, who had that then? Did Brenda, Brenda, Brenda had that. And that's when we started to go to the forest because our research was over about 10 years. And um, and it was all synchronistic how things evolved, evolved and developed. And I think that you and many other people will find that, like Paul, that you get synchronicity that seems to get involved. Oh, so much so, the, yeah. yeah, there we are. There you, have, you, yeah. you know. Yeah, definitely. OK, we really haven't got time to uh, discuss. Just probably the last question. Yeah. yeah, Rudd Hudson. Uh, well, possible? I suppose yeah, anything's contact. possible. Using a human pendulum, yeah. Paul has said himself that, you know, the instruments are just a form of divination. It's the mind that's focusing upon that. It's the mind that's doing the work. It's all in it. The mind's You've the got it. Absolutely. Be careful what you wish for. Yes, mm. to be okay. very careful. Very careful, yeah. Uh, just an observe, just a statement here from uh, Heiser64HH. I live in New Mexico. For work, I got to see the hangars where the uh, Army Air Corps stored everything. A very peculiar construction. Oh, Excellent. That's interesting. Uh, you, you've 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 just left us with hanging there, and uh, we're just about to close down. But you know, you might want to reach out and just tell us what were peculiar. It's fascinating that left us wanting more. Yeah, and uh, really, I'd love to read all the other questions out. And thanks to everybody for sending them through. Thanks, Jessica, for uh, uh, directing them directing them towards me to ask uh oh, alison's in as well good to see alison because I, I didn't realize hi alison <laughs> so and good. Uh, i've got to thank everybody for the monetary contributions tonight from jojo ta uh ta says best excuse to hide in my shed and let the <laughs> and let the wife look after the two boys on a thursday night so <laughs> there we go martin abbas thanks for a contribution tonight cups of tea for the team and uh, we have uh lee roscoe uh, the Kinsella twins uh, and the world would be a better place with more people like these two. Oh, without oh, a doubt. Uh, and yourselves included. Remember, this is all, we're all family. And I say that we're so grateful and honored. We need each and, other and to and help each other. Solve this well, thank you yeah. so much. And can I just say one thing? I don't know how many is in chat now, but however many are in, uh, if you've not pressed the like and subscribe button, it's there, it's free. Look for it and just support us a little bit more yeah and uh, madeline wick thanks for the donation karen beeman thanks for the donation tonight and um the dis i'll finish with this one uh the disabled welshman says both books look and sound like great reads and will buy both soon absolutely oh, thank and, you. very honored thank you i, I, thank I was you. raving yeah. about uh, ronald's cover but when that were up on screen it, they're great absolutely but uh, a book's more than a cover, but it, it, it draw you in. Thank you. <laughs> On Thank that you note, then, we are out of time, guys. Right, in fact, the shilling in the meter is just about to expire. And uh... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you both so much. Thank and all, the, all of your lovely crew that's come in. And it's right, been brilliant. wonderful to just bash things about. That's what it's all about. We don't have the answers, Appreciate but we can it. knock them about. You made it so easy for us. Thank you. And so as far as I'm concerned, good night. Good night. And yeah, and good night from me. And thanks, Jessica, for doing the moderating. And uh, we'll see you all on Sunday uh, with an interactive. So um, just be hanging about with your computers, your phones or what have you, and we'll be there. We'll see you next time. Bye.